Hi, my name is Thorsten Schmidt and welcome on the NMS Prime channel. In this video, I want to speak about the CMTS analysis. So CMTS is the cable modem termination system. This is the head end where the cable modems are registered. And what is most important on the CMTS part is the upstream and the downstream channel analysis. So maybe let's jump in and I want to show you how we solve the problem in NMS Prime. NMS Prime is a free and fully open source provisioning system for DOCSIS. And if you don't know the project, then check out our website, which is called www.nmsprime.com. So, okay, let's begin. In the left side, you see um, I'm on our production system and I will jump in and show you the network, which is called Gorna. And here we can see that this is our CMTS, which is called Corner Gore Gable Gateway 10. And under this uh, gateway, we've got two different clusters, which you can also see inside um, here. So the first thing that we can do is that we click on the Gorner Cable Gateway, and then we've got um, here a list or a table of the downstream channels of the Gorner Cable Gateway. And we see we are running with modulation uh, QAM64 and we've got different downstream channel powers. So these are editable values. So we can just type in a different power level and we can click on save. And these will perform a switch inside the power level of the downstream channels. And we also can change our frequencies and our channel wide. So these are eight downstream channels and below we've got the different upstream channels. So for the practical part, the upstream channels are more um, important for analysis stuff. So for example, here we see the input power level, the upstream channel frequencies we are using. And here we see the corrected or the errors of the corrected and we see the number of active cable modems, which is just DOCSIS 2.0 mode. So in real, there are more cable modems uh, online because um, they are bonded on the upstream bonding group, which is not listed here. So, okay, on the front, we've got the signal to noise ratio, which is the most important, um, or one of the most important stuffs. And on the right side, we've got the modulation profile. So what we can do is also that we jump in and now we can change um, the frequencies and the band right channels. The next cool thing is that we can see we've got two different clusters on this network. So for example, we've got the cluster Dittersdorf. And when I jump inside, I just see the architecture of this network. So maybe I just jump in the topography mode and then I've got a controlling view here and inside the controlling view, I can see the upstream channels for this cluster only. So these are the four upstream channels only for the cluster Dittersdorf. And we see we've got some auto reloading here. So we see the SNR values and all the other stuff in real time. Okay, maybe we can just jump to Gonau, which is exactly the same, and we can click to controlling and see the channels here. What is also important, of course, is not only the real-time values. What you also need as an operator is the history, so the monitoring part. We've got two different ways actually to address the topic. If you are more familiar with the NMS Prime system, then you notice that we use Kakti in the background to monitor all the stuff. And for now, I want to show you how we do this with the Kakti system. In one of the next releases, there will be a direct implementation so that you can see the Kakti graphs inside of the cluster or the CMTS um, part which is yet already done, but, mm, but only under the provisioning view. So maybe we jump inside the provisioning view. So if you are inside of provisioning, there's a registration which is called CMTS. And here we also see 
the GONO cable gateway and we can click to analysis port and here we've got some more analytic stuff which means for example we see the firmware we are running we see how long the cable modem termination system is online and here we've got a quick table about the upstream channels and here is the analysis part of Cacti and we can see for example I make it a little bit bigger this is the last three days of the upstream channel one and we've got the signal to noise ratio which is the yellow line then we got the upstream utilization which is the green part this is in percentage so which means here for example which was the highest values were 40 percent so this upstream channel was um, 40 percent um, utilized in these times and the upstream power is the red line so one comment on the upstream power in the NMS Prime system we've got a special uh, automatic control we call it automatic power control and with automatic power control we set the power level the input power level of each upstream higher when the SNR or the signal to noise ratio gets a little bit down so this implies that we are not falling um, under a critical threshold of the signal to noise ratio of course as you notice or as you will know is that when you are maybe getting under 20 or 24 it depends on which modulation profile we are running if you are getting lower than a specified signal to noise ratio then you experience problems on the upstream and to avoid this we have an automatic power control inside our system which automatically sets the power higher when the signal to noise gets low. Of course we are using dynamic modulation profiles which also implies that if the SNR the signal to noise ratio is better then we are using higher profiles for example uh, of QAM64 and when the signal to noise ratio gets down we are using lower profiles so for example just QPS cage. Okay, here we've got also some kind of traffic inside which, which is running and this is our normal monitoring stuff. Of course we can say we don't want to see only the last day so we want to see the last week and then we can jump exactly inside each upstream channel and monitor what's going on here. As I explained in one of the next releases we will automatically link these diagrams to the cluster setting so I want to jump back and show it again to you if you click here to controlling then we will link the diagrams here also for this cluster only of course and the next cool thing I will make um, more videos about this is that these tables are generated dynamically which means you can assign more values to it if you need it or you can drop values and you can of course adapt it to your own style so there's a lot to talk about this uh, the module which will help you here is called SNMP module you can see it on the left side and all the controlling views are using SNMP of course and you can adapt the style by your own and I will make a lot of videos or some explanation videos about this so okay maybe we jump into a bigger system which is not a uh, Cisco UBR 7225 here we've got a Cisco UBR of 10k and maybe we just type in to show you that there are more upstream channels available and we've got a different view so that is that are the downstream channels in this system so you see many downstream channels and here we've got the upstream channel table and you can see that the upstream channel table is still larger than on the other system I showed you and of course as I explained we can jump uh, inside a different cluster uh, or one explanation about this if you imagine maybe we have 60 or 18 upstream channels it is really important that everybody who knows or everybody who uses the system exactly knows which upstream channels are connected to which cluster and to make it visible for everybody and not just for the HFC guys we've just used the cluster or the cluster controlling stuff so dump here is the cluster beside the network 
Marienberg and we can jump into controlling and now we've got we see ah uh, okay these four channels from the cable card 600 upstream 0 to upstream 3 are directly connected to the dump cluster and we've got the signal to noise ratios we've got the input power levels we've got the frequencies and we can change these stuff in real time and get the analysis in real time so maybe okay that's it for now thanks for watching if you have any questions about this stuff, then just comment below or get in contact with me. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. If you like the content, then put a like and abonnate our channel. See you in the next video.